the Brevard City Council held its regular meeting on November 20th. Council began by celebrating the state championship titles won by the Brevard High girls volleyball team and the Brevard High boys cross country team. Mayor Copeloff declared November 21st, 2023, Lady Blue Devils Volleyball Team Day, and November 22nd, 2023, Blue Devils Boys Cross Country Team Day. City Manager Wilson Hooper then briefed Council on the city's water shortage response plan. In spite of the area's severe drought conditions, the water treatment plant is still pumping its normal rate of 1,800 gallons per minute. Dennis Richardson, the water treatment plant operator, explained that while some municipalities' water shortage response is triggered by drought status, Brevard's plan is triggered when the plant cannot sustain at least 1,700 gallons per minute. The city's plan, Mr. Hooper explained, is divided into three levels of response to decreasing levels of water availability and corresponding types of water uses. Stage one is triggered by the water treatment plant pumping less than 1,700 gallons per minute and involves the city launching a public information campaign to encourage voluntary conservation. Stage two is triggered by the water treatment plant pumping less than 1,500 gallons per minute and involves mandatory restrictions in which only type one and two uses are permitted. Stage three is triggered by the water treatment plant pumping less than 1,300 gallons per minute and restricts consumption to type one uses only. Under the classification table for water uses, Type 1 is the highest conservation level, which limits water consumption to essential uses, like the maintenance of life, health, and safety. Type 2 is a lower level of conservation that extends to some social or commercial uses. Type 3 is the least restrictive conservation level and encompasses elective or non-essential uses, like recreational or ornamental water use. Again, at this time, the water treatment plant is pumping at its normal rate, and the conservation response has not been triggered. During the public hearing period, Assistant Planning Director Aaron Bland introduced a proposed tax amendment that would add extractive uses and industries to the city's Unified Development Ordinance so that those uses and industries can be regulated. Senior Planner Emily Brewer then outlined a proposed tax amendment to the UDO that would clarify the definition of building line, yard, and frontage line, while also updating and enhancing the accompanying graphics. Council voted to approve amendments to the floodplain development section of the Code of Ordinances that align the city's flood development ordinance more closely with the updated requirements in the North Carolina Emergency Management's Model Ordinance and that consolidate the enforcement, appeal, and variance procedures. Council also authorized Mr. Hooper to approve a contract with Tanoka Construction for the Times Arcade Alley project. The project's original budget was $1,071,070 and the low bid came in at $1,085,856. During closing remarks, Councilman Aaron Baker congratulated the newly elected council members and thanked all candidates who ran for contributing to a healthy election cycle, a sentiment echoed by Councilman Gary Daniel, Councilman Maurice Jones, and Councilwoman Geraldine Dinkins. Mr. Jones also invited the community to come out to the Motown Christmas fundraiser for Rise and Shine on December 9th. Ms. Dinkins requested continued action to maintain the city camper site. Councilman Mac Morrow congratulated the championship athletes and coaches for their hard work and achievements. City Attorney Mac McKellar lauded the extension of Mr. Hooper's contract and congratulated the new council members who will be sworn in on December 4th. Finally, Mayor Copeloff expressed pride in the Brevard High School athletes, welcomed new council members, noted the upcoming tree lighting ceremony on December 1st and the holiday parade on December 2nd, and voiced her gratitude for the local community and organizations who will host Thanksgiving events. The Council's organizational meeting will be held on December 4th, 2023.